I can describe CC's pretty well by simply saying macaroni and cheese pizza. It's cheap, it's unhealthy, it's creative. You may regret eating it later, but you're still gonna eat it. That's how I look at CC's. For $5.99, you can eat all the pizza you want. They have all the traditional flavors, but then they also have buffalo chicken, barbecue pork, spinach, alfredo. They'll even make a custom pizza for you. They also have salad, pasta, cinnamon rolls. I wouldn't call it the best quality, but it's cheap and you get a lot of it and it's a unique experience. If you haven't been to CeCe's, I recommend giving it a try. Worst case scenario, you wasted $6. Though it may be hard to find one, they're not as big as they used to be. 10, 15 years ago, they were the fifth largest pizza chain in the country and today they're hanging around number 10. 2009 was their peak with 650 locations that has since dropped to 397. It has not been good times over at CeCe's. What was thought to be the next up-and-coming pizza place has fallen. So today, I want to talk about this one-of-a-kind restaurant, how they grew to that level, and speculate as to what happened to them. Today, there are more CCs in Texas than any other state. 42% of them, which makes sense because that's where they started. In 1985, these two guys, Mike Cole and Joe Croce, opened the first CCs restaurant in Plano, Texas. They came up with the name CCs because both of their last names started with the letter C. It was simple enough. The whole thing in the beginning was very modest and simple. To open that first restaurant, they each took $10,000 that they had saved up, borrowed another $87,000, which wasn't a lot of money to open a pizza place, but they made it happen. To keep the cost down, they rented a location that was on the smaller end and personally brought in their tools to remodel it. I would say that their initial business plan was similar to Little Caesars. That smaller location motivated them to put a greater focus on carryout, but their competitive edge was to keep the cost down so they can sell their pizzas at an unbeatable price. The model ended up being so successful that they quickly set out to open a second CeCe's restaurant. Now, since the first one worked out so well, they were a little more ambitious with this one when they chose to open it much closer to Dallas. It's a larger market, but also more competitive. It's a higher risk, potentially higher reward type situation. It did not work out quite as well. The rock bottom prices weren't as effective, but it turned out to be a good thing because it forced them to develop their identity. They added their now famous pizza buffet as an attempt to stand out from the competitors. I'm confident that they were unique in doing this because today they claim to have invented the concept. Years later, Pizza Hut became famous for their pizza buffet, but according to CeCe's, they were the ones who did it before anyone else. And since they kept the prices low and the quality high enough, it worked so well that it inspired them to shift away from the carryout aspect and focus more on that buffet. Advertising it, improving the seating and dining experience, making some logical expansions to the food that they offer. Eventually adding things like pastas and salads and dessert pizzas. Dessert pizza is a combination of two words that I can get behind. Once that second location rebounded and they started to make a name for themselves in 1987, they got into franchising. That's when others would pay them money to own and operate their own CCs. Once that happened, they started popping up all over Texas. In 1990, they had 10 locations all within the state, and by the year 2000, they had grown to 345, primarily around the southeastern part of the country. Despite being a value pizza chain, they actually had a pretty decent reputation. Over that 10-year span, they had become known as one of the cleanest, most affordable, family-friendly restaurants out there. In the year 2000, they attempted to move a little bit away from their role as a value pizza place when they raised their price and used that increase to try to improve things a bit. See, when they started that buffet back in 1985, the price was $1.99. Like I said, it was unbeatable. Then over the next 15 years, it had slowly crept up to $2.99. So in 2000, when they suddenly raised it to $3.99, they needed to justify it. And I think they did it. It was a big effort that involved expanding their selection that included offering vegetables 
vegetables as toppings for the first time. They also redesigned their restaurants with their new red and green color scheme and adopted a new logo to go along with it. It was a noticeable change, and their overall sales saw an improvement from it. They used that momentum to continue to grow, making their way up north and out west. Throughout that decade, there was a new CC's Pizza opening just about every week. And as I said, their peak was right around 2009, and they've since been shrinking considerably. I know that when you hear something like that, 2009, the first thing that your mind jumps to is the recession, but I don't think that's the case here. They have disclosed that their sales in the first week of 2009 were 4% higher than the first week of 2008, suggesting that the recession probably helped things, which would make sense for a value pizza chain. When you don't have the money to spend on your usual pizza place, you go to CeCe's. It's among the cheapest of any of them. So we have to look to other places, which has proven to be difficult because CeCe's has always been a private company that hasn't been disclosing too much information. But looking at everything I could, I put together my best guess as to what's been happening with them. Do you remember Joe Croce, one of the two season CCs that started the company? I wonder if he was the first C or the second C. Hmm. For their first 18 years, he was a major part of the company. He was the president and CEO, and I would consider him a good one. He seemed to be passionate about the business and took pride in the way that it was represented. It was very important to him that the food was fresh and the service was good and the restaurants were clean. Since CeCe's is mostly franchised, they're not the ones running the restaurants. So the best thing that they can do is be selective when choosing the franchisees, make sure they're trained right, check up on them consistently, things like that. Under Croce's leadership, they were very good at this. The system worked well, evidenced by the fact that for their first 15 years, they never closed a restaurant. They never had to because they were selecting the right people and keeping them on track. In 2003, suddenly, Joe Croce decided to exit the business. He had two young children he said he wanted to spend more time with, so he stepped down as CEO, sold his share in the company, and effectively left altogether. But he cared so much about the restaurant that he was adamant about selling it to CeCe's managers. Most likely, he could have gotten considerably more money entertaining offers from outside the company, but he wanted it to go to people that he knew and trusted. And by the way, after the sale was done, he donated 20% of the proceeds to his church, so that's the kind of person we're dealing with. Despite his best efforts to leave the company in the hands of people who would do well in running it, I don't think that was the case. As soon as he left, the company amped up those expenses expansion plans. The year before he left, they opened 20 new restaurants, and the year after he left, they opened 97, which to this day is their biggest single year increase. In 2006, they said that they planned to be well over 1,000 locations by 2010. None of it ever happened, but it shows you where their mind was at. It's my suspicion that once Croce was gone to hit these numbers, they became more lenient in selecting franchisees and generally lowered those standards for the restaurants. Maybe they could have been accepting them from bad areas, maybe they weren't financially stable enough, maybe they just weren't good at running a restaurant. Part of the reason they were able to accelerate things was because they started signing agreements to open multiple franchises. In many cases, it was 10 or 20 of them at a time. When I read reports about individual restaurant closings, a lot of them seem to be from this big opening spree leading up to 2009. As far as their lower standards, I don't think their reputation is anything like it used to to be. Some of you watching this may think that they are fantastic, and then others might think that it's the worst place you've ever been. It's really a toss-up as to what you're gonna get. The fact that there's so much inconsistency suggests that these franchises are disconnected from the central company. There have even been quite a few health code violations. I'm just saying, some of the stuff that they're letting slide today wouldn't have gone over well in the days of Joe Croce. In 2017, they said that their same store sales had gone up for 13 straight quarters, which I don't think is that impressive considering all the closures before and during that time, but when asked, their CEO at the time said that one of the main reasons behind it was a stronger relationship with the franchisees, almost suggesting that at least at one time that was an issue. More possible evidence for this is the fact that CeCe's has been taking over many of these franchises. They are controlling many more of them today than they were a decade ago. So my conclusion here is that the new owners didn't live up to the original 
101. They got blinded by expansion and let some stuff slip through the cracks while forgetting what made them successful in the first place. In 2015, they made several changes in what I believe to be mostly an attempt to bring back the customers that they had already lost. If someone had a bad experience there and now they see this big revitalization strategy as they call it, maybe they'll give them another chance. I do like their new tagline, it's better believe it. The restaurants have been redesigned, they say that they want to be known as more than just a pizza place so they drop the word pizza from their name, but I do want to point out that on their website it does say CeCe's Pizza and they replaced that 15 year old tomato logo with this funky looking pizza. So I don't know, it seems to me like the purpose was to just mix things up more than anything else. I should mention that CeCe's was sold in 2016 to Arling Group, this New York based investment firm. In 2018 they hired a new CEO and chief operating officer. That same year they started this incentive program to hopefully attract some high quality franchisees. It seems like they're making a lot of the right moves, but I just don't see the evidence of improvement yet. Maybe they're building towards something big, or maybe it's too late and the damage is done. They've made all of these statements saying that they will be opening new restaurants. In 2017, they said Revitalize CeCe's steps up new restaurant openings. In 2018, they said CeCe's primed for growth in 2019. None of this has happened. Let me know in the comments. Have you tried that macaroni and cheese pizza, or any of their food for that matter? And if you have, what's your opinion of it? I imagine the response is going to vary based on whoever's managing the CCs near you. Also, do you agree with my theory, or do you think there's more to it? It's a lot of speculation, but I think the story does start to come together. And any other thoughts you have about CCs, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.